A little while ago, I published this video where I explained what is Block 3060 and T-Tech and how it works. But I have to remake it now because it's outdated and there was a major misinformation in it. So hopefully I get my facts right this time. And you know, it's also a good excuse to remake the video with better editing than last time. Alright, so here we go. Let's start from scratch again. Block 36 TNT is basically just TNT encased in a moving block. Whoa, wait, wait, don't kick away, don't kick away. I'm just kidding. Come back, man. It might not be a good start, but I swear, this is a serious video, alright? Block 36 TNT is basically just TNT encased in a moving block. A moving block is basically a block 36 for the duration of its movement. Any block in the game when moved is in block 36 state before returning to its original state. And block 36 has a very special property. It has a very weak blast resistance. So let's take the strongest movable block there is, the ancient debris. Blowing up TNT inside of ancient debris will deal no damage to surrounding blocks because the ancient debris is explosion proof. But now let's repeat that, except with a moving ancient debris. Now would you look at that? Not only did we blow up the ancient debris, but we also blew up a cavity in the glass tube, just as if the TNT wasn't encased in anything. So what happens when we move TNT inside a moving block, is that the TNT will blow up blocks around just as usual, but won't blow up item entities, because the block it's encased in is going to shield the blast rate and insta-kill items. So, a block 36 TNT will deal 95.5% of its default block damage, according to Encolier. On average, because of course it can't be that simple. But will only deal 1 HP of damage to entities, and items have 5 HP. So it's possible to blow up 4 TNTs next to items, without killing them and losing our precious resources. It is somewhat similar to using corner TNT, but instead of having a very narrow blast explosion, we have a 360 degrees explosion angle and item protection. The first recorded use of Block 36 TNT I have seen is on this Billy Billy channel. The farm is credited to the name of Tutulu. That farm was shared on the huge Von Geiger's Discord server by Krebs and then shared on stream by Encolor. Now at the moment, it takes around like a minute and a half for the TNT um, Jupiters to take out a whole tree, which is ridiculous. So my idea is because these these TNT that get trapped in the cobblestone don't deal any damage to the item, I'm just going to spam TNT and take out the whole tree in one go rather than launching TNT from the side um, every like five seconds or so. So this should make, you know, make it a lot faster from like 90 seconds to maybe five seconds. Uh, which is huge, like that's that's the difference between this farm running on a computer and it not. Alright, let's go back to Tutulu's farm. We're gonna take a look at the Block 36 TNT dupers. Tutulu's farm pushes a row of cobblestone to shield the piston from the TNT blast. It's a cheap and very simple way to make a Block 36 TNT module. But we can make something smaller, more compact. We only really need one cobblestone and a decently solid block behind it. We can use waterlogged stairs, ancient debris, or even cobblestone. Wait, what? Cobblestone? That's not going to shield the explosion when it's moving, right? Y yeah, you're right. Let me introduce you to a very cool magic trick. One that bedrock player can only dream of. Block dropping. Block dropping is the name given to the piston feature where they drop a block in front of them without retracting it. A sticky piston normally needs to extend for 3 game tick or more before empowering for it to push and pull a block. But if we shorten the pulse to 2 game tick, we cut the animation short and the piston will drop its block after 2 game tick instead of 3 and it won't pull it back. And we can push this further. Sending a 1 game tick pulse to a sticky piston will cause the block to be pushed in 1 game tick. And then there's 0 tick that teleports the block instantly because the piston is both powered and unpowered in the same game tick. I'll do a video on that in the future. But where am I going with this? Well, block dropping is useful in our case, because it only applies to the first block pushed by the piston. Every other block pushed by the same piston is going to be pushed in 3 game tick. So what that means is that we have a stationary block here before the block in front stops moving. So let's go over this animation step by step. We send a 2 game tick pulse to the piston, the piston starts pushing the two blocks in front of it, the waterlogged stair is going to be dropped after 2 game tick, now the stair has stopped moving, right? 
so it's blast resistant again. Now, in the next game tick, the cobblestone will stop moving. So we have to blow up the TNT right now, while the cobblestone is still in block 36 form, aka while it's still moving. The animation I just showed you used a waterlogged stair, not a cobblestone. Can you guess what happens when I use cobblestone instead of a waterlogged stair? It's nothing really spectacular. The cobble is pretty strong, so it chills the piston from the TNT. But it's not invulnerable, it gets blown up by the TNT in the process, so we need to replace it every cycle. So, you remember when I said, that's not going to shield the explosion when it's moving, right? Well, as I just explained, it's only the cobblestone at the front that is moving. The cobblestone behind it has stopped moving when the TNT explodes. That's the magic trick. Ok, nice. We just blew up the TNT at the exact same time that the stair stopped moving. But, what makes one action happen before the other? Is it random? It's important that the order isn't random, because if the TNT blows up before the stairs stop moving, the TNT would blow up the stairs. And by the way, that's a very bad thing, we don't want the stairs to explode. So, for that, we'll take a very brief look at this page on the Minecraft wiki that tells us the order of the tick operations. We're going to be looking at two things specifically, block event tick and entity tick. Block event tick is the event in which the piston moves blocks, and entity is the event in which entities do stuff. And TNT is an entity, therefore it blows up in this phase. Ok, I found both of them. Here is block event, and here is entity tick event. The wiki tells us that these are in the order that they get processed in game, meaning that pistons block event, push their blocks before TNT entities blow up. So we know our setup is predictable. I really hope I didn't lose you in this explanation. Anyways, for the nerds still watching, we can now move on to my branch of tech. Bridge Block 36 TNT Modules In the early developments of Block 36 TNT Modules, I saw in color on YouTube making use of zero tick and shield debris to design a compact block 36 TNT module, and I didn't like the idea of wasting my precious ancient debris on that. At this time, I didn't know that there was a way to not use ancient debris. My idea to remedy to the waste of ancient debris problem was to push a two block side block stream to the center of the trees where the TNT would be the most effective. The cobblestone being moved forward both function as a bridge for the TNT to get to the tree, but also as a padding to protect the pistons of the module. But that's pretty much all there is to it, for the core function at least. Bridge modules are just block 36 TNT modules that use a 2 block high block conveyor to push TNT farther out. Though they are very simple mechanics wise, they are very 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 customizable, and they can be optimized in a lot of ways. There's just too much for me to cover in this video. So that's all the theory I have for you today. You should have a decent understanding of the Block 36 TNT mechanic, and that's all this video was supposed to teach you. If you're interested in seeing how crazy Block 36 TNT can get, I recommend you watch my fastest nether tree farm video. If you're interested in these types of technical guys, I collect a bunch of videos from other smarter people on my Discord server. There are a bunch of in-depth videos on a wide variety of tech that can teach you a lot. It's in the TMC resources channel on my Discord server. Otherwise, don't forget to worship nether trees, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.